beautiful, uh, exciting images that any human being has ever taken. Uh, but what I want to talk a little bit about tonight is, is beauty in a slightly different sense. Uh, beauty more in the sense that Einstein would use the word. Uh, that is the beauty that comes from a uh, more comprehensive, uh, somewhat deeper understanding of the universe. Uh, as, as we learn more and more about the universe that we inhabit, uh, I believe, and it certainly has been the case for me, that a real sense of the beauty of the universe comes through, not just the physical beauty, but beauty at a much deeper level. Uh, I'm going to talk about two different things tonight. Uh, some of my research on uh, R. Lyries and variable clusters. Uh, but uh, when Connie asked me to talk about the thing you're most excited about, the thing I'm most excited about is cosmology. It's, I don't do research in cosmology. I'm what they might call an amateur cosmologist. That is, someone who approaches the subject from a love of it rather than as a profession. So I'm going to talk a little bit about both of these topics. Hopefully not run out of time. Maybe if, if there's a way to cut off these. This is a schematic diagram of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, most of the stars in our galaxy are concentrated in a disk, a very flat disk. Uh, but the stars that I'm interested in, the stars that I study, are the ones above and below the disk. These objects here are globular clusters. Uh, they're, as it sounds like, a globular cluster of stars. Uh, few hundred million, something on that order. Uh, when our galaxy first formed, it formed from a gravitationally contracting cloud of hydrogen and helium, and more or less spherical in shape. So the very first stars that formed, the oldest stars in our galaxy, maintain that spherical distribution they call the halo stars. Uh, relatively quickly, the gas uh, formed the disk, that is, as it, as it passed through uh, clouds of, of gas, those gas molecules and atoms were deflected into a flat plane where later generations of stars were formed. Our own sun uh, is somewhat out in the suburbs of our <coughs> galaxy. Uh, this schematic diagram is a little bit misleading because what you're looking at there is a schematic diagram of about 10% of the mass of our galaxy. Uh, the other 90% is uh, dark matter matter that neither emits nor absorbs any kind of radiation or light. Uh, its actual nature, we have no idea. That's why we just simply call it dark matter. Uh, we'll come back to this in a later slide. This is an actual photograph, an image, of a globular cluster. Uh, its name is M3. That means it's the third object in the Messier catalog. A lot of the fuzzy things in the sky were cataloged by Messier so that other astronomers wouldn't mistake them in the comments. But it's a gravitationally bound system of stars, maybe several hundred thousand stars. They're very, very old stars. These stars are on the order of 13 billion years old. So among the oldest in our galaxy. And since our galaxy is the same age as all the other galaxies, the same age as the universe, 